The next data acquisition routine we would like to demonstrate is multiplexing. Now that we've acquired survey scans and identified the major elements, we would like to determine the atomic concentration of those elements. Multiplexing can help us do that. Before we set up for multiplexing, let's take another look at the survey scan. To do that, we will hold the shift key and press function key number 15. And let's display area number two is the most interesting for multiplexing because it has several elements. And soft key number one allows us to display we also see that we have already differentiated and smoothed that data. So it has been massaged. Rather than going through the data massage again, we could use function key number three and toggle massage data to yes. Now we can use soft key number one to display that massage data. This is area number two. Remember, we have identified this peak as tantalum, this peak as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and tantalum peaks. The reason I wanted to show the survey scan is remember, a survey scan gives us a broad range, which allows us to identify roughly the presence and absence of elements depending upon the signal to noise. What multiplexing can do is if we thought that we had a peak out in this area, we could set up a smaller range, just a window, and spend the same amount of time as it takes to do a survey scan, but we would get much better signal to noise because we would be spending that time acquiring data and signal averaging in a smaller area. That is one function of multiplexing is to look in an area, a short range, and determine in the same amount of time or less time whether a peak is there or not. We can also use multiplexing to more accurately define the peak, exact position of the peak, and the peak structure. What we are using here is one volt per step. We could change the volts per step in a multiplex routine and take several data points per electron volt, which would give us better peak definition. The third use for a multiplex, which I mentioned, which we will demonstrate here, is to determine the atomic concentration. When we set up for a multiplex, we also need to determine the number of sweeps we will spend on the peaks. In the multiplex routine, we must include all of the peaks which we have identified. It will then set them equal to 100% and determine the atomic concentration. From the survey scan, we can determine the number of sweeps. We will look at the high energy tantalum peak which is the largest peak. So if we do one sweep on the tantalum peak, notice the carbon peak is much smaller. To get the same statistics, we should probably do 10 sweeps on the carbon peak. So by looking at the survey scan, I can determine roughly how many sweeps I should go to get good signal to noise on each element. So let's go one sweep on tantalum. We can go two sweeps on nitrogen, three sweeps on oxygen, and 10 sweeps on carbon. Now that we've determined that from the survey scan, let's exit this mode by using soft key number eight. Let's again erase the data by holding the control key down and striking the clear key. We're now ready to set up for a multiplex. We'll hold the shift key and press function key number six. 
which is setup multiplex. Again, we can choose either to use the previous settings, define new settings, or if we have a file on disk with the settings we wish to use, we could toggle to file, enter that file name, and all of those settings would automatically be set up. What we would like to do here is define new settings. So by pressing function key number one, we can toggle to new. We can enter that. We now see that we can enter an element for region number one. We then will see the lower limit, upper limit, line number five, EV per step, and line number six, the number of sweeps. All of these parameters are stored in the tables mode and can be changed by entering the element table for the parameters which the operator would like to use. We have them filled in at this point. So we will use the parameters that come from the table, evaluate them, and then determine whether we want to change any of those parameters for this particular acquisition. Let's start with carbon as region number one. Region number two will do nitrogen, region three oxygen, and region four tantalum. Let's type in carbon, and we want the first carbon peak. So we will type in C1, enter that value, and automatically the computer will, from the table mode, fill in the lower limit, upper limit, EV per step, and number of sweeps. It just so happens that the number of sweeps, which is stored in the tables mode, is 10, which is what we want to use, so we will leave the number of sweeps. We can use the lower limit and upper limit. I do not believe we need to change those parameters. And we will use the parameter of one EV per step. We are now ready to add a region, which is soft key number one. Region number two will be nitrogen. So we'll enter N1 for nitrogen. Again, it fills in the parameters a lower limit of 364, upper limit of 389, EV per step is 0.5 or a half an EV per step, and the number of sweeps is six. We wanted two sweeps on nitrogen, so what we can do is press function key number six and enter the number of sweeps at two. Also, if we wanted high resolution, which we had mentioned earlier as one of the functions for multiplexing, we could get better peak definition using a half a volt per step, but we are spending a time per step of 25 milliseconds. So for this range with a half a volt per step, it will take us twice as long to acquire that data as using one volt per step. Since the actual peak height of nitrogen will not be affected very much by using one volt per step or a half a volt per step, it would be more expedient for us and quicker for us to use one volt per step rather than a half a volt per step. Again, if we were looking for peak definition, we would want a half a volt per step, maybe even more. But in this case, we do not need peak definition what we want is speed, so we will use one volt per step. Pressing function key number five will allow me then to change that parameter. We are now ready to add another region using soft key number one. Region number three was going to be oxygen, so we will enter O1 and enter. Again, the parameters lower limit, upper limit, EV per step, and number of sweeps. I believe we, we decided to use three 
sweeps on oxygen, pressing function key number six and entering three. Again, we do not need peak definition. We want to acquire the data faster. So using function key number five and changing the EV per step to one. Again, we're ready to add another region. Soft key number one. Region four will be tantalum. We want the high energy tantalum peak, which the acronym should be TA2. TA1 would be the low energy tantalum peak, TA2 being the high energy tantalum peak. Lower limit of 1655, upper limit of 1685, one volt per step, number of sweeps is 18, and I believe we decided we wanted one sweep on tantalum. So again, function key number six, and changing the number of sweeps to one. At this point, we can change any of the values of the other regions. To do that, we hold the shift key and press the function key, which corresponds to the region of the value we want to change. For example, if we want to change the lower limit of carbon, we would hold the shift key and press function key number one because it is region one. Holding the shift key and pressing function key number two would allow us to change the values for nitrogen. Holding the shift key and function key number three would allow us to change any of the values for oxygen, region number three. Going back to holding the shift key, pressing function key number one, we now want to change the lower limit, which is function key number three, without holding the shift, now allows us to change the lower limit. Let's change the lower limit of carbon from 257 to 250. Now we have all of the parameters for carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and tantalum. We have the proper number of sweeps, which we determined by looking at the survey scan. We are now ready to go to the next part of the OJ Multiplex setup menu. Before we go to the next menu, let's look at the soft keys. We have already utilized soft key number one to add regions. Soft key number two will allow us to delete regions. To do that, we would use the shift key and the proper function key to define and highlight the region we wish to delete. Once we highlight that region, we then press soft key number two and it will delete the region which was highlighted. Soft key number three will allow us to add a setting. This is our user programmable setting. We've utilized that in the SEM menu and we set up the parameters for taking SEM images. If we find that we use these parameters, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and tantalum, quite often, we can put a file name, a user-definable file name, in this menu so that we'll, when we enter the multiplex setup, we then will have a choice of settings, previous, new, file, and the user definable setting. That's what soft key number three will allow us to give a name to these settings and allow us to access them very quickly every time we enter the multiplex setup mode. Soft key seven will allow us to abort from this menu and soft key number eight will allow us to go to the next menu which is where we want to go at this time. So pressing soft key eight allows us to get in the multiplex setup menu, page two. The present settings are given as new. If we used previous settings, this again is just telling us what settings we set up for in 
the first page of the menu. We can now enter the acquisition time per area, again very similar to the survey scans. This will be the time that we will spend per area. It will then calculate the number of cycles. Now a cycle being 10 sweeps on carbon, two sweeps on nitrogen, three sweeps on oxygen, and one sweep on tantalum. That would constitute one cycle. When we enter the acquisition time per area, it will calculate how much time it would take to complete a cycle compare that to the time per area which we have entered and then tell us how many cycles it can do in that amount of time. Let's enter five minutes and we see that the computer responds with number of cycles 22. Again line number two using function key number two will allow us to either raster over the full area at the magnification we are at during the acquisition or we can do selected areas. We've already demonstrated that in the survey mode. What we would like to do is selected areas and we want only area number two. So we will toggle analysis area to selected areas. We can display the multiplex data either in the N of E mode or D N of E mode. That's very important in this case because since we are looking for the atomic concentration, we do not have sensitivity factors for N of E data. The data will be taken in the N of E mode. It will then be automatically differentiated the peak heights of the differentiated peaks measured and that will then be used to determine the atomic concentration. What we would like to do then is display all regions in the differentiated mode that will tell us whether our windows have been set properly in order to display both the positive and negative excursions of the differentiated peak and not of the N of E peak. So what we will do is press function key number three and toggle to the D N of E mode. The computer, when it does the atomic concentration, uses a five point differentiation mode. So we will leave line number four in the five points differentiation. And again, we will utilize the EMS routine setting up on one point. In the right hand corner of the screen we see the electron gun parameters. This is just to remind us what our electron gun is set at. Right now we have a scan magnification of 5000 and a beam voltage of 15 kV. Looking at the soft keys, we see that soft key one allows us to immediately acquire the data. Soft key number three again allows us to add a setting. Once we have the parameters set the way we want, we can define a setting. This again is the user programmable setting. We could go back to the previous menu by using soft key number six. Again, soft key seven, we could abort this menu. And soft key number eight allows us to exit. We now have all of the parameters set up to analyze carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and tantalum. We realize that that is located only in area number two, and in area one and three, we would not see tantalum or nitrogen. We might see a little bit of carbon, and we also might see some oxygen. But we want this analysis to be done only on area number two. That is why we chose analysis area selected. What we now want to do is make sure that the analysis will be done only on area two and not on areas one and three. To do that, let's exit from the multiplex setup. 
and let's go into the areas menu, which is function key 18. We have already utilized soft key number two, which allowed us to define the areas. What we would like to do now is look at the area select, which is soft key number one. When we press soft key number one, we have displayed the area number. We have areas one, two, and three. And then we have a statement, acquire data. We can either acquire or not acquire data on any or all of the areas. What we want to do is say no to area number one. We can do that by pressing function key number one, toggling it to no. We want area number two to be yes. And we want area number three to also be no so that we acquire data only on area two. So by pressing function key number three, we can then toggle that to no. Going to the TV screen, we see the areas superimposed on our TV image. This is showing area number two. I can again toggle area number three on showing where area number three is, and I can toggle it off again. Same way with area one. I can toggle area one on or off. This gives me a visual representation of where areas one, two, and three are located. So by utilizing the TV and remembering the elements we have set up in the multiplex mode, we can determine which areas we want on and off for this analysis. Notice right now we only have area two on, which is where we will see the tantalum, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Once we are finished with the setup utilizing the TV and the areas mode, we can go back to the computer. We can now exit the menu for selection of defined areas for acquisition by pressing soft key number eight. At this point, we're ready to acquire the data on area number two, multiplexing for carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and tantalum. Since we have already set up the multiplex, we do not need to use the shift key and function key six. We can just press function key number six and the acquisition will begin. It is now setting up the multiplier utilizing the EMS routine. We now see the differentiated data for carbon. That was the data for nitrogen, for oxygen, and for tantalum. Again, we are signal averaging. This is now carbon again, the nitrogen, oxygen, and tantalum. We can see on the line the element label, which element is being displayed. It tells us not only the element, but also displays the element acronym in the color which the element is being displayed. Again, we have cycle number five out of 22 cycles. We have only one area. We have four regions. It is showing us region three out of four regions, region four out of four regions, region one out of four regions. This is being updated every time we go through a cycle. We can also see how many sweeps. We are now displaying sweep seven out of 10, eight out of 10, and 10 out of 10. 
It may not display every sweep because the acquisition is much faster than the display. And rather than slowing down the acquisition in order to display the peaks, what it will do is display the, for example, the third sweep of region number three. Notice here we started displaying the fourth sweep of carbon rather than sweep one, sweep two, sweep three, and so forth. The data is actually being acquired in the NV. After it has been acquired, it then differentiates and displays the differentiated data. We are now on cycle 10 out of 22 cycles. Looking at the soft keys, again, soft key number one would allow us to go into the background and manipulate data during this data acquisition. Soft key number two would allow us to stop at the end of the cycle. If we determine that we have spent enough time and we have good enough signal to noise, we would not have to go the full 22 cycles. We could stop earlier. Soft key number five would allow us to stop at the end of a sweep rather than at the end of a cycle. Soft key number six would allow us to display the data in the N of E mode as opposed to the D N of E mode. Soft key number seven again would allow us to suspend the acquisition and then continue after we have done what we need to while the data is being suspended. And soft key number eight would allow us to abort the acquisition. Right now, we are looking at the differentiated spectra. What we can do is utilize soft key number six, which would then display the data in the N of E. We now see the carbon peak in the N of E, the nitrogen peak in the N of E, oxygen in the NV mode, and tantalum in the NV mode. You can see now why in the D NV mode, it's easier to determine whether the windows are set properly. It's more difficult in the NV mode. So D NV tells us where the peak and background will be when we calculate the atomic concentration. Again, we can toggle to the differentiated mode by once again pressing soft key number six. The display will now be in D N of E. We are now on cycle 20 out of 22. We are almost finished. This will be our last cycle. The present cycle we are on is cycle 22. And the last sweep will be our tantalum. Once again, the manipulation of this data will be described in the data massage section of the videotapes. What we would like to do is evaluate what we have very quickly now. Again, we can do a display last acquisition, which is pressing function key number 16. That will give us our multiplex display menu. We only have one area, so we cannot choose multiple areas for display, but we can choose multiple regions. We could actually manipulate and look at each region. What we would like to do, though, is the main purpose was to determine the atomic concentration. So we want to massage this data by pressing soft key number five, data massage. Notice that on this bank, we can now ask for the atomic concentration, which is located in soft key 
number three by pressing atomic concentration. The computer will then give us a readout of the element name, the atomic concentration for that element, and the sensitivity factor which the computer used to calculate the atomic concentration. These sensitivity factors are located in the tables mode and can be changed.